Later, one of our power talkers, Professor Leonard Jeffries, Dr. J, will hold another class, this time on the role of economics in the development of civilization and what it means in the era of Donald Trump. Before we get to Dr. J, one of another one of our power talkers, social activist Dick Gregory, is here, helping us to analyze whether Dylan Roof, who was convicted of the murders of the Charleston Nine, is stone-cold racist, or is he crazy, or both? Greg, welcome back to WL Radio. God bless, God bless, peace to you, and... And thank you for the show, man. <laughs> so many people got something to listen to. And it drops a lot of that fear. But uh, we in this country is at the same place where the Jews was and the gypsies before it all collapsed. That's what fear do. And if you get somebody on the show one day that understands what fear do to the mind, Mm. And you see this, and they can put anything past you. That's what pickpockets do, man. They they learn. And you all out there listening, you know, pickpockets in the old days were called the soft touch. You got a thousand muscles in your hands that you don't use. They develop that. So you think they just pickpockets. You looking at Trump and all that and think that he's just an ordinary. No, 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 no. Hitler. See, we just hear about Hitler. We hear about the SS troops, but some of you out there heard of the SA troops. That was that elite, elite group of homosexuals that put him in power, and he killed them all. Okay? And that's where this is going. Huh? That's, that, that's where this is going. But because young folks don't know that much about Hitler and all of that and all the stuff, Hitler didn't just rise up. Hitler came to power with 288 Votes, that's what you get for voting for the lesser of the evils. If my mama was alive, I think she knows enough now because some people will vote for one or the other because they didn't know. But there's a lot of people voted for Hillary because they were scared of Trump, um, for, for Trump because they were scared of Hillary. Anytime you vote for the lesser of the evils, call you got evil in you. Okay, you can play all the games you want. All them decent folks didn't know they was putting a monster in. You got two monsters. Which one you going to take? You got one guy that rapes a, 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 a child every six weeks and another rapes one twice a year. So you're going to take the less of the evil to take care of your children. And the other thing we got to understand, the church didn't make a kneecap. Huh? The church didn't make a toe. And the Pope was here last summer. He had Seattle was so bad. He couldn't hardly walk, so I'm going to let him wash my feet. There's a universal God. That's what happens when they take take the, the pagan religion. The pagan is just like Catholicism, paganism. Then they switched it around. And so all at once now, so let me get back to what you just said about the, 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 this youngster down there. First, there's a whole lot of people that don't know. And let me say this again now. Ferguson, we all looked at Ferguson. Now, this is something you all can do. You can pull this up. Pull up when he was coming out of that cigar store. And he was pushing that little, that little short guy that was a, that, that was security. Look at the picture. He had on flip flops and short pants. Fifteen minutes later, he laying dead in the street with long pants on and Nikes. Now, why you miss it? Because the network's got to be part of it. I'm sitting here, and I can see it, and all them people out there. But when you see it, they're telling you. It's like going to a boxing match. They tell you what you see. You go to a football game, they tell you what you see. That's why they can throw games and trick games. They're telling you what you're seeing. And what you're seeing is not what you're seeing. And so consequently, when he came out of there, now, the one guy, Johnson, became world-renowned. He had his hands up. He had his hands up. Well, let me tell you something. And I'm telling you this here. I wouldn't tell you if I could let you prove it because it's so, so odd, you know, and to protect you who's scared. You think anything of somebody else is putting the truth down. But I learned a long time ago, truth don't have to be validated by ignorance. Okay? It's that simple. 
had a mother in the house that told me Santa Claus was a white man and she was buying the toy. Jolly old St. Nick. I heard that all my life, but nobody explained it until I did my own research. Then I found out Mr. Nicholas was one of the, probably the wealthiest man in Europe. And during the winter solstice, okay, he gave all his money away. And that's how Mr. Nicholas became St. Nicholas. You got folks ain't never been saints, okay? They made him St. Nicholas. So we put it around, and we almost look at him like Santa Claus' helper. And then Santa Claus, where'd he come? He's a chimney sweeper. Back in those days when that was invented, Carl, we didn't, we didn't have fuel. People build houses, but they use wood from trees, and that left soot in the chimney. And that's why Santa Claus go up and sweep the chimney down. That's why they got him coming through the chimney. But there's another system that's in your head that's a chimney there. And I'll get to that in a minute. And so what I'm saying, they put it right out in front of you. Now, and, 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 and call this is what you ought to do. You have somebody there, have them pull the grand jewelry. When the grand jewelry came up, hold on one second. Hey, Doc. The grand jewelry came out now. I went there. I told Martin Luther King, Joe Matthew, man, we better get out of here. Something ain't right. <laughs> Something's not right. Now, I've never seen, long as I've been in demonstrations, I've never seen 24-hour demonstrations as a festivity. Festivity. And then run down. Look, that's Christian down there. See, see, see. Hear me now. Oh, I have somebody that was there. Huh? Tell you, 24 hours a day, man. They was riding around in their cars with their children with them. Women was walking down the street, pushing their babies. Just festivity. I said, man, I've never seen anything that have affected a group of people like this have. Now, at 8 o'clock, the violence starts. It's not the people. It's them thugs and provocateurs that come in. Okay? Now, here's what happened, Colin. Now, we're still in Ferguson, right? Ferguson. So, uh, here's what happened. The grand, the, 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 the district attorney that handled the grand jury, you know, he didn't know that there's never no violence till after it get dark, and he picked the time to come to the street and release the grand jury finding? Come on, Carl. I mean, I'm sitting there watching it, and I'm saying, wow, well, had I not been there, I wouldn't have known. But I was there. And I, I've never seen such joyous in my life. And then I'm saying, well, why is he picking this time of night when he could have done it at 12 noon? So now, Here's what he said, and you all need to see this. We know y'all be talking that yacht talk because you're scared and don't even know you're scared. But look at it for yourself, nobody has to tell you. And listen what he said. See, when Johnson, his friend, that all the movement got started around the world, he had his hands up. He had, Tom, don't shoot, his hands is up. Well, let me tell you who that punk is. And you can look at it. When I saw the FBI put him in witness protection, I said, oh, wait a minute. That's not a federal crime. Why is he in witness protection? What are they protecting? Okay? Now, most people listen, don't even know he was in witness protection. Okay? Now, all at once now, when he reads it, and everybody said he was found out, even the black folks on the jewelry. So we're so busy calling somebody's Uncle Tom and all this. And so what? You don't call white folks no names. You get on the show. You, I hear you talking. Call It's Uncle Tom. So-and-so's Uncle Tom. So-and-so's doing this here. Well, let me tell you. Here's what the, the DA said. He said, we had a very good authority and a, a respected black person in the community. Johnson. He told us he was lying. He told that to the grand jury. See, y'all sit with your fist. That's how Hitler come to power. You're so busy. And I'm not saying this being mean. 
I'm saying you so busy and don't know NBC, CBS, all of them is part of the trick, okay? I know that Kennedy didn't die in Dallas, but NBC and CBS don't know it. Here's a man, the most powerful man in the world, shot, shot down. Hold it one second. All right, we're speaking live with Dick Gregory. And let me just say this. Uh, if you're in the D.C. area, Greg's going to be uh, at the D.C. Improv tonight. Uh, and that's 1140 Connecticut Avenue. But he's sold out. I don't know why I'm telling you because he's sold out. No, you can't no, get tickets. Right. <laughs> right. Sold out for like, like three months. <laughs> but he, he's going to be coming back to town next month with, with Paul Mooney. And we'll tell you more about that because uh, uh, I know he's got a matinee show. So he's only going to be on for a little while uh, today. But Greg, why uh, uh, don't you finish up? Let me just tell you how it works real quickly. So, all at once now, I know that King didn't die on the balcony, okay? So, I'm that smart. Uh, no, 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 no. Everybody covers it up. Did you ask yourself a question? King is laying on the ground. And five people stand there pointing. Well, wait a minute. How'd they know it wasn't going to be another shot? Right. Hold well, that thought right there, Greg. We've got to check the traffic and the weather in the DMV. I'm sure you want the folks want to find out where the traffic is when they go up to uh, Connecticut Avenue on Northwest. Join us, folks, after the traffic and weather update on AM 1450 and FM 95.9. W-O-L, where information is power. Here those folks, our guest is social activist Dick Gregory. As I mentioned, he's got a matinee show in D.C. tonight at the Improv. It's the one on Connecticut Avenue, Northwest. But it's sold out, uh, so don't try to even go and get tickets. But he's going to be back in town with Paul Mooney next month, and we'll tell you about that. We're going to get to uh, Dylan Roof, the, the man who was convicted, the young man who was convicted of the Charleston Nine murders. And find out what your thoughts, if he's stone cold, racist, crazy, or both. But, Greg, let's go back to your story on... Uh, I'm taking you this this way so when I get to what happened now here's what happened in Ferguson the guy who read the grand jury report the prosecutor he said he said he lied well how come I'm the only one who heard that y'all didn't hear it and you got to say wait a minute what I lie to you what I lie to you what there's no reason to lie to you. But people who do have a reason to lie to you, they'll lie. But all you got to do, I'm telling you something that ran over and over and over and over. Now, how come you haven't heard from Johnson no more? Hmm? Here's the guy that that's what the movement got started for. Huh? Black Lives Matter. They came and put millions of dollars behind that movement because of what he said, you know. Don't shoot his hands was up. I know that. No, 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 no. I got the same eyes that the universal God, not the church, the universal God gave everybody. Queen Elizabeth is the richest woman on the planet, but she don't have no more toes than you. Her fingernails don't grow under the bottom of her feet. Huh? They're everything. But we get mixed up and talk all the stuff, then they come and manipulate. So let me just finish Ferguson. And then we'll go to the question you asked. So now, Ferguson, have you asked yourself, how come this movement started because what he said? You ain't heard nobody. This, this, this year passed, last year passed. You haven't heard nobody mention him. They talk about dead ball players that died 50 years ago. But this man, nobody. And if you looked at that movement, there's white folks when they march. And all y'all got to do is check it. When they marched in New York City over that killing, they marched on FDR Drive. That's white folks. They never went to Harlem during the march, and they haven't gone now. They haven't gone on all them people that's been killed. They went all over the world. They didn't march in Africa. Huh? What do you think that means? We're so busy with racism and racism and racism and all of that. You don't see it. Okay. So all you got to do is check it out. And so again, uh, I'm saying, then that night, Johnson's, Johnson's friend, the one that said he had no shoot, his hands was up. His friend was hanged worse than anything had ever happened in the South. Right? 
two blocks from where the rally was, listening to what the grand jury was going to say. Two blocks. You know how many cops were there? State troopers, federal troops, because they didn't know if it was going to be a riot or not. And two blocks, man. They killed him brutally, put him in a car, set the car on fire the same night. And nobody knew about it but a hand. And I'm shocked the Washington Post wrote it and talked about there's never been a lynching that we could describe to equal what happened to his friend that night. Okay? And so again, I'm saying, when you sit there, how come we didn't know that? He's the one that said his hands was up, and yet and still his best friend was killed that night. And, and and all the cops was there, and nobody, nobody talked about it. And so again, I'm saying, when you sit and look how they can change stuff. When Trump came up and called uh, Senator uh, from uh, uh, McCain, McCain, all you got to do is Google it. McCain is the biggest rat liar. Just a common point, and everybody, I know it, NBC don't know it. I know it, presidents don't know it. Let me tell you something. He wrote a book. His daddy was an admiral. He wrote a book. He got shot down in North Korea, okay? They captured him, had a broken leg. He made a deal. He said, if you take me to the hospital where you take your, 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 your people with money, I tell you everything. This is John McCain, okay? All right? John McCain. Now, all you got to do is get his book where he apologized to his daddy. And you think about all them people. Now, here's what happened. When they was going to bomb Hanoi, you know, it was the, the Americans was coming from an aircraft. And everybody was waiting for them to come straight to him. What they would do, they'd come off, make a lift, and go 300 miles out of the way and come back and circle them. McCain was the one that told them how they did it. And that next day, death to American policy increased 77%, okay? That punk that sits around and talk all that crazy talk, NBC don't know it, New York Times don't know it, the military people don't know it, and all you got to do is get the book and see what he apologized for what he did and all of that. He comes back a hero because they covered it up because they got to use him for something. But we can see Trump because ain't nobody covering it up. They're covering up the real Trump. What they letting you look at is the shadow. Okay, anytime you see Trump in the red tie, that's him. Anytime you see Trump and got another color tie on, that's the clone. But y'all can't even get into that. You know how to cook barbecue ribs? Huh? <laughs> you, you know how to make Kool-Aid? But the truth, look in the Bible. See if you see barbecue ribs, Kool-Aid, cocaine, beer. Talked about prayer and fasting and be still and listen. Oh, that's there. When you say you're blessing, go look at yourself when you hear your blessing tonight when you eat. You pray for everything but the whiskey. Something told you, I'm not supposed to drink. You ain't praying. You ain't said no blessing, no Thanksgiving. The Indians taught us Thanksgiving. Abraham Lincoln made it a day of fasting. But the Indians taught us. How many of y'all prayed for Indians? And you folks in Washington, you running around all that old Indian crap on, all that Indian crap. Let me tell you, millions of black folks ran away from slavery. Then they went to the Indian Reservation. And the Indians wouldn't let the white folks come in and get them. And your thanks is running around in some Indian crap. Okay, so let, let, let me just say this here. So that's what happened there. There. St. Louis cops is a billion times worse than the cops in Ferguson. You don't know that. After the Ferguson shooting went down, two days later, they killed two people in St. Louis. Nobody talked about it. And so again, I'm saying, and so as we work our way now to that trial that's going on now, the unit bomber, huh? All them folks, the, 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 the bombers and, and, and those are the same federal people that come in faking like they they just judges. That's who they can't talk. That's who they can't tell you. They go in and say, look, uh, 
Uh, we see to it you won't get the death penalty. We're against the death penalty. So they can't say nothing. They still squabbling law today that we don't think he's fit to, uh, oh, how fit you got to be uh, when you say get the death penalty. I hope he don't get it. How are you going to be for death penalty for some, but not for another? That's like you're against a black person being lynched, but a white person or a Chinese person, oh, that's different. So all of us are fixing to pay the price for it. And so again, let's go to San Bernardino, okay? All them people were killed there a week before Christmas. Not a thousand people, not nobody made a cell phone call. You didn't hear one cop, you didn't hear one ambulance. You didn't see nobody interviewing anybody, huh? Look at one of the fine names on the planet. I don't know him as a human being. Oh, the, one of the fine entertainers, okay? He was killed, and and they diverted the plane to a little plane 40 miles out of Chicago. When you in an airplane call, 400 miles or 40 miles is the same. How come he didn't go 40 miles to the right? and land that plane in, in in Chicago. Now, here's this little bitty hospital. Oh, we so busy moaning. Oh, he was in a, you haven't seen one newspaper man, person, woman, come in from around the world and interview people in that hospital or show you a picture of that hospital where they can that print. You saw him the night before in Atlanta, that one man show. He did two of them. Did he look tired? Did he look sick? And then all at once, the next thing we hear, he's on a, a charter plane. But what they didn't tell you, who was the charter plane owned by? Huh? Warren Buffett. Huh? That was his plane. Okay? But he goes around as the fine, this powerful plane that they said hit the World Trade Building. Oh, we stupid enough to be some little punks. Huh? Little punks. All they got to do is say Arab, and you already, that's like you say, uh, black person, and you, you you ain't even supposed to get a fair thought. They hit, look, Paul, if you in that plane and you flying it, that plane's going over 700 miles an hour, the World Trade Building look like a toothpick to you, okay? That's what it looks like, okay? Now, you tell me they all hit them built on the first strike, and then somebody said, well, how'd they learn how to, oh, they didn't, they just, they just learned how to, Use the simulators. Okay, well, let me see who may where they they, they went to to to, to 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 Florida, huh? The simulator place where they teach pilots how to fly. Who's that owned by? Warren Buffett. Okay, okay. I don't expect you to know this. I don't expect you to know it at all. I know it, but NBC don't know it. Oh, hold, hold on a second, Greg. We're going to take a quick break here, uh, and uh, we get back to Dylan Roof and whether you folks think he's crazy or just a stone-cold racist. Your thoughts, 800-450-7876. We'll take him after this short break on AM 1450 and FM 95.9. W-O-L, where information is power. Back to the Carl Nelson Show. Oh, Washington, D.C.'s 1450. 1450. W-O-L Radio. And I just think it was supposed to get back to Dick Gregory, but I want to talk about uh, Dylan Roof. Okay, it was, Greg, it was Greg, I know you got it. I don't want you to miss your show. It'd be late for your show no, today. No, 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 no. Let's talk about it. And I wish you had somebody sitting next to you that could Google so they could see. That church is where Juneteenth was invented, huh? That church. Celebrated June the 15th, 16th, and 17th. That little punk white boy that had no education drove a hundred and some miles, and nobody asked, How did you know this was the church where June teeth was invented? Starts on the 15th, ends on the 17th. You did the shooting on the 17th, okay? How he know that? And how come ain't nobody talking about it, huh? Now, watch this now. He goes in. Any of y'all out there ever been to a black church? You go with a friend, but you a stranger. I dare you to get close to that preacher. Here's a white boy sitting next to him, and nobody thought anything was wrong with that. He walks in and he says to a, a black woman, and it went all over the world, uh, I'm, don't worry, I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to leave you to tell the world what happened. What? Are you crazy? Most folks leave a note. Most folks leave a note. Only 
So he reloaded five times, and she's still there. Huh. I don't know what kind of black woman she was. I've been around black women all my life. And you're going to sit down in a circle and kill folks? And she didn't run? Can I tell you something else you need to Google call? What's that? It was a black woman. Went all over the world. She said, I told my grandson, six years old, to play dead. You, any, you, you remember that story? Yes. Okay. Did you know she was killed, the black woman? Did she you? was killed. The woman who told the world. Right. I told, at the church, the woman. Uh-huh. Yeah. I told my grandson to play dead. She was killed. Nobody asked the question, well, who told, who told about her she was killed? The six-year-old had a press conference? Huh? You ever been around a child and all that shooting and screaming is going on and you think that child going to play dead? See, that's what fear do. Okay? You defy gravity. To this day, nobody has said, how did that get around the world? Okay? And so what I'm saying is, is when you sit and, 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 and look, you look at what happened in Baltimore. Get right back. Where the black woman came out and was whooping her child. Hey, hey, do you understand motherhood? If the black or black child steal your car and the car hit a tree and it's on fire, you ain't going to go there and whoop him. You're going to get him safe in the middle of the ride. She's whooping him. And nobody says, wait a minute, hold it, hold it. And she's on Time Magazine, and then somebody found out something. Oh, they thought she was going to be the woman of the year. And they found out what really went down. You ain't heard no more about it. So if you go there and watch in that church, now, he came into the parking lot, parked the car, okay? Oh, wait a minute. That church had... How come we had never seen the cameras of him pulling in? Huh? How come we had never seen it? How come NBC and none of them have asked for the car as it pulls in? So he goes in, has a conversation, sit down. Everybody's there. Then all at once, you so I call a newspaper down there, a black one. I said, hey, Dr. Gregory, uh, Yes, this awful thing here. So let me ask you something. Um, what time did you hear about it? He said, oh, about uh, 11 o'clock. I said, you know how early that was? I said, I mean, are you, are you all black paper because you can't afford the white paper? He said, the white paper didn't hear about it till the same time. Oh? <laughs> oh? Are you serious? So this is what this is what's there. I don't expect you to know it. Call if you a brain surgeon. I don't expect me to come and talk to you about brain surgery, but there's simple stuff. I noticed you didn't wash your hands before you performed the operation. Okay? I noticed you didn't do this, huh? And so what I'm saying is that when you stop, they got everybody talking about uh, the, 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 the the black uh, neurosurgeon that ran for president. He ran nine months and never mentioned that what he pulled off had never happened in the history of the planet. They had separated Chinese twins, but never the head ones, huh? Never the head ones had they separated. He wasn't even in the room when that happened, okay? Wasn't even in the room when that happened. Until my Ben Carson. Yeah, he wasn't even in the room. And then just to cut it short till we get back, here's a man that pulled off something that had never been pulled off in the history. He's never called been nominated. For a Nobel Prize, if you nominated for for Radio Show of the Year, it's ten other people that's nominated with you. He had never been nominated. We're not talking about got a Nobel Prize for medicine, huh? It never it never happened. What happened was a team of Germans, eighty seven of them, had been doing those operations and failing. They said, "Look like we got it straight now. We need one more." And that's when they. Pull this guy. Somebody Google the operation that happened. That guy was kidnapped from South Africa, a black man. So it wouldn't look like it's a racist thing. Okay? They, they, they get a black man in there, a brother. Okay? And and so everything is cool. And then he he got so crazy when he went to President Obama's prayer vision. You remember when he said, 
Obamacare is worse than slavery because. Right. Did you know when he got back to John Hopkins, he was fired? <laughs> fired. Mm. They had already paid him to do the commencement address. John Hopkins. They said, keep the money, just pack your stuff and get out of here. Okay, so this is what it is. This is white folks' business. And you bring a white person on and see if you can find one quickly and know how to cook chitlins, okay? That's our business, huh? They're talking about you got rhythm, you got rhythm, what's the rhythm? Blues, do you know what it's like? If you you have you got a son, ABCs, kept repeating ABCs, and all at once he learned it. The next time I see you and him, you putting him in college, huh? But wait a minute, go on. ABC, you sang the blues when you nine years old, my baby done left me. The blues, the blues, the blues. Blue Monday. I wonder how many people get killed or something happened bad on Monday. You've been singing Blue Monday. What makes that Monday blue? And so again, we go back to to what happened there. And and so all at once now, when the black press guy called me, now I called him. And uh they found out, well, I mean, we ain't hear nothing about this year. I said, you mean something? The biggest story in the world, and might be the biggest story this year, and y'all there, and the news didn't break to 11.30. Did anybody see? Call, I was in, in, the, in, in, in L.A. the other day. A Google car picked me up. And I said, you know, I heard you saying something boom, boom, about nine months ago. Uh, well, you said uh, all them people in the building celebrating. Nobody made a cell phone call. He said, well, I was working right down the street at a car selling cars. And the FBI and federal agents came in and showed us a picture of three men dressed in army fatigue. See, this is who we looking for. And then when it come out, it's a man and his wife, okay? And so again, you know, when you put the oil out there, people come to you and they tell you things and they can't trick me because all I've got to do is pick up the phone. I mean, when 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 when, 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 when Malaysian Airlines disappeared, oh, are you all crazy? Talk about these children with their pants below their butts. But you believe with all that hardware we got, why Trump is crazy as he is. He knows something happened to Kennedy. He don't know no more. That I know, he don't know no more than the NAAC, or than, than the, the NBC and them, but they ain't going to tell it, okay? All you got to do is ask the question. When somebody listening say, say, well, wait a minute. When John McCain wrote the book, I got the book. You mean Trump didn't bring the book to show it? Oh, that's part of the game. Oh, that's part of the game, Call. They spend trillions of dollars. Hmm? What we going through now, start being legislated under Harry Truman. And and, 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 and when that little thug poke, the our new president, when 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 he said so and so is lying, politics have never said, all you got to do is go back to nineteen forty eight when the headline said, you know, Harry Truman lost to Dewey, and then 12 o'clock that morning, the headline changed. He won <laughs> in Chicago. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. I'm not a prophet. I sound like a prophet because when I ran for president in 1968, Wall Street Journal, November the 7th, that's three days from the Tuesday, which was Friday. No other paper ran what I'm fixing to tell you now. All the computers were shut down at midnight because it showed Dick Gregory, the presumed elected president of the United States. Why? Because the computers spit out that Dick Gregory got 9 million votes in the state of Pennsylvania. Not all over America, 9 million votes in the state of Pennsylvania. And once them numbers came, they couldn't stop it, so they had to shut the count down. Right, okay. Greg, we, we got to let you go because I don't want you to be late and we got to take a break. So this is a good time to let you go. Let me you know what the traffic is like huh? going out there. Huh? Yeah, because you got to fight that traffic going out to Connecticut Avenue at Northwest.
Okay, we, we'll come back on and I'll run the whole piece down. Yeah, when, when, we, when, we, when you finish the show, we'll come back and deal you, with it. Thank you. Thank you for one more thing before I leave. Kathy okay. Hughes. Kathy Hughes. All right, hold that thought because we, we got to take a break here. They tell me we got 10 seconds right here on AM 1450 and FM 95.9. WOL, where information is power. Radio. Yeah. And I'm just staying with us, folks. Just want to remind you, coming up in, at the top of the hour, we're going to be joined by Professor Leonard Jeffries. We're going to talk about uh, the role of economics in the development of civilization and what he means in the era of Donald Trump. We would see Gregory, and, and he's got a date. Freddie just makes, told me to make sure that you're on time. I'm going to be blamed if you don't make, don't make it over to the improv on Connecticut Avenue Northwest by 6 o'clock. That's showtime. But the show's sold out. I'm telling you this, folks, so don't try to get over there because uh, there are no more tickets. been sold out for months. But Greg's going to be in the district next month with Paul Mooney. We'll tell you more about that. Greg, you wanted to say something before yeah, you leave? I was saying about Kathy. I worked with Kathy. And that's when my life changed. You know, people hear you. And they said, wow, listen to call. They don't know how many years you put into this. They don't know the rhythm. I learned the rhythm, not from being a comic. That rhythm don't work when you're sitting about discovering things. And, and so me and Kathy sit there, what, what a genius. I read paper. You, you've been around me. I, I, I get every paper I can find. Kathy just sits there and come out of her spirit. So it was on a Friday night. We on from, from 6 to 10. So I said, Kathy, we was finishing the show. She said, what are you talking about? I said, well, if she owes you. No, I said, if the winch owes you any money, you better get it tonight because she'd be dead by the end of the week. They killed her the next day. Huh? They killed her the next day. Huh? I know that. NBC don't know it. Huh? CBS don't know it. But I know it. <laughs> if you're stupid enough to believe that. And so when you stop and think about it, and the last question I'm going to ask you, you ever heard the word tall, dark, and handsome? Call yes, I've heard that phrase. Uh, you ever heard him call Sidney Poitier tall, dark, and handsome? You ever uh, heard, heard Belafonte tall, dark, and handsome? No, not to those brothers. That's a phrase that they use for white men that they know is passing. Clark Gable, Rudolph Valentino. That's why you never heard it. So this is what this is about. And so again, I say... Here's your homework. The death, the, the killing happened on the 17th of June. And I just want you to Google this. Google two days later on the 19th of June in South Carolina, $29 million was fast tracked to give to the victims Ten folks. Did you hear that before? Did you hear that? It's three point two million dollars per family, huh? And nobody knows about it but a handful of people. All you gotta do is Google it. Two days after the shooting, you know how long it takes to go. This was the Justice Department fast tracked twenty nine million dollars to pay the victims of the family victim of the okay. So that's all I'm saying. It happens every day. Every, every day. And what y'all fix to see Trump do, most of you wish he was never born. Okay? That's what's fixing to happen, and you can't feel it. You can't see it. But if me and Carl applied for a job collecting garbage, the first thing we get it, they're going to ask us to bring in our tax return. Here's a man running for president of the United States and he don't need no tax return. Instead of y'all saying, wait, that's impossible. Hey, wait a minute. And so again, I just thank you, Carl. I thank what you can put out and tell, Leonard, tell Brother Jeffrey, he took my two babies to Africa. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. I'm the blackest thing on the planet. Giving a million dollars to the movement and I told my two oldest, y'all going to Africa. You know my two, you know what Dick Gregory's children told him? We don't want to go to Africa. They'll eat us. <laughs> I said, what'd you say? They'll eat us. Now, all you got to do is be clever. I said, okay. My wife was upset. You couldn't believe that was coming out of a Gregory. I said, well, y'all have to go to Africa, but you're never going to go back to Disneyland again. And so they went to Africa. That's Leonard. Oh, he tell you, Jeff. They went to Africa with Leonard, Jeff, and his wife, and the group, so they could go back to Disneyland. And after they went to Africa, 
they never wanted to go back to Disney Land. Hmm? Wow, what a story. <laughs> yes, what a story. Greg, uh, it's, be safe out there now, because I don't want you speeding out there getting up on the Avenue. No, 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 no. no, no. Won't even happen. I know the shortcut. <laughs> okay, yeah, because you heard what the traffic was like. It's, it's yeah, crazy yeah, out there. That, 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 it's always like that. It, it, you know, it's snowing here. Yes. Yeah. Well, but yeah, uh, I snow, so that makes it a little worse. But, okay. I, but all the folks are probably in their seats waiting for you to show up. Thank you, thank the, you. The early ones. Thank you, Greg. Well, you know what? I'm like you. You're the star of that show. Hmm? And that makes you hit there on time. <laughs> okay. You ain't never missed it.